Hello, Beatrice. Your potato harvest looks quite impressive. What is your secret? Hello, Korea. It's all in the seed which I'm producing through rooted apical cuttings. I've never heard of that before. What are rooted apical cuttings? Well, they are just like seedlings. They are produced from tissue culture plants in a greenhouse. They are clean and free from disease. I use them to grow my own seed potato that are of much higher quality than the ones I used to recycle from my harvest. Really? How does it work? Well, I purchase the cutting from cutting producers and then plant them in my field. Each cutting produces between 10 to 15 tubers depending on the varieties. The cuttings produce high quality tubers when planted in a clean field. I believe you. I mean, just look at your yields. I didn't get a thought of what you have here. How do I get started with rooted apical cuttings? I will refer you to the producer that I buy from. Just to alert you, the transplants really like the sun, so avoid shaded areas for growing. You will need to plant them in a protected area away from animals and water runoff from higher plots. Will they grow in any type of soil? Good question. Look for loose, fine, sandy clay soil with plenty of access to water for irrigation. This sounds really promising. What other tips would you give me regarding the cuttings? Well, proper field preparation is so important for the cuttings. It helps to establish the cuttings faster. You have to break down larger clumped soil into smaller pieces to make it easier for the cuttings to establish and grow. Make sure to mix fertilizer into the soil at the time of planting or during land preparation. And do I need to treat the soil before planting? Great question, yes. You want to treat the soil with insecticides to manage cutworms before transplanting and one week after or as needed. How do I transplant the cuttings? The best time to plant the cuttings is in the late afternoon when the sun is not too hot. Bury the collar and leave only the top foliage above ground. If the soil isn't already moist, water the plantlets immediately after planting. Also, pay attention to the spacing during planting. The ridges should be spaced between 60 to 75 centimeters apart. The plantlets within a row should have a space of between 25 to 30 centimeters apart. But that would greatly reduce the number of cuttings that I would have in a plot. Wouldn't planting more cuttings get me more seed potatoes? No, the spacing affects your yield. You want to give the cuttings enough room to extend and grow stolons. These stolons are what later produce tubers. If you plant cuttings too close to the edge of the ridges, they won't have enough soil to cover the stolons. Stolons that are not covered form stems instead of tubers. Oh, I see. And how often do I have to water the cuttings after planting? Well, keep watering each morning and evening until the plants are fully established. Because if the cuttings don't receive enough water while they're establishing, they may die. How often do I need to weed? Weed removal just after planting could damage the crop. So if the weed is not affecting the cutting's growth, it's better to leave it alone. But some weeds are harmful. Do I leave those alone too? Well, control those as soon as they emerge, but be careful not to injure the plant. Those weeds can be removed by pulling or raking between the plants. How about I use herbicides? Won't that cut down on work? Oh no, herbicides can have disastrous consequences on cuttings. I know herbicides are effective on potatoes, but cuttings are delicate and sensitive planting materials. Even a little trace amount can carry over and cause total damage to the cutting. Another thing that I'll highly recommend is hilling. It helps to loosen the soil and enhances tuber formation and bulking. It also helps to achieve uniform tuber size, which makes them easier to market. Remember, if you don't cover the stolon, they are not going to produce tubers. Ah. And when is the best time to heal the plants? Perform healing when the soil is not too wet to avoid soil compacting or clumping. The first healing should be done two weeks after planting the cuttings, which is also when you should be doing your first weeding. The hills are formed by excavating soil from the 60 to 75 centimeter paths between the rows and raised uniformly around the cuttings. The first healing will be about 10 to 15 centimeters high. Always make sure that the collar of the plant is buried with the soil, but take care not to damage the roots and stolons. Avoid using hoes or spades around individual cuttings. You will then repeat the healing two to three weeks after the first one. The mound during the second healing should be about 30 centimeters high and 30 to 35 centimeters wide after the second healing. 
How will I know that the tubers are ready to harvest? Well, you will want to check your tuber size on a regular basis. When you see three quarters of the tubers are seed sized, by this I mean about the size of a chicken egg, then the plants can be dehomed. And what is dehoming? I have never heard of that. <laughs> well, this is when you cut the above ground part of the plant, but leave the tubers in the ground for between 10 to 14 more days, allowing the skin to harden. Wow, I now understand. I'm just wondering, what is the best time to harvest the tubers? Harvesting should be done in clear, sunny weather, but when the soil is moist, sunshine helps the tubers to harden and dry more quickly. Dig gently when harvesting to avoid injuring the tubers. Ah, thank you so much. I have learned a lot from you. I am definitely going to try this in my farm. I am sure next year I will have a very good harvest just like you did. <laughs>